Good evening to everyone and thank you very much for joining my lecture kindly hosted by the Institute of Egyptology, Vienna University. In the following minutes, I will try to present a brief overview of the implementation of social network analysis methodology into the social history of ancient Egypt. Microhistory is a rather recent approach in historiography dating back from the late 1970s. It is essentially characterized as a methodology for historical research that focuses on subjects on a small and a very small scale. In fact, the scope of study is generally limited to small units, whether regarding space, subjects, or even time span, and as such, it poses its affiliation, especially with anthropology. Microhistory emerged in Italy with the journal Quaderni Storici and to a lesser extent in France as a general critical reaction against movements that were focusing on the large scale historical structures like the French structuralist school of the Annals. Hence, this new methodology, or not so new anymore, redirected the focus on the individual life experience in opposition to the long-lasting process approach, initiating, as a consequence, vivid debates on postmodernism. The studies of microhistory are still rare in Egyptology, especially those addressing personal initiative, political participation, and social and family networks. Since the microhistory is focused on the individual lives, the prosopographic data forming the basic requirement for the manifestation of personal and social identity within a community of persons are one of its most important tools. And what exactly are prosopographic data? Prosopographic data are relational data by which individuals can be connected to each other. By evaluating and comparing all prosopographic data, the personal interrelations within a social community or network of persons can be reconstructed by means of network analysis. As such, they are in the same time not just a criterion to identify a person, but also a network parameter which forms the common basis for connecting people within the same network and consequently generating the social capital. Prosopographic data has proven to be of substantial value also for studying Middle Kingdom and Second Intermediate Period society and the implementation of network analysis, which investigates the relational pattern of network members throughout the application of graph theory, allows various new possibilities for the reconstruction of family and social networks otherwise not always so clearly detectable. Social network analysis is a method developed in the mid of the 20th century in mathematics, anthropology and sociology, used to describe and analyze human relations. Since then, the body of research into SNA has grown significantly and academic journals, textbook, vocabulary, and an increasing sophistication in its technical tools have been developed. SNA is used to study entities, individuals, people, or groups of people, call them nodes, linked together throughout social interaction and the relations, links between those individuals, in fact, edges, in order to quantify and measure interconnectivity. Since the individuals are not part of just one network, but of many, networks are constantly shifting, expanding, overlapping, and finally converging with society itself. By using network theory to understand social relationship, SNA exemplified various types of interactions throughout network, either ego network and complex networks, and analyze them in order to provide an overview of the networks in which selected entities, in fact, nodes, manifest themselves. The starting point of any SNA is to define nodes, in fact, actors and edges, in fact, links between them, and in the second step, to record individual data to transfer into a visual or graphical platform and to create network graphs depicting the data visually or to create sociograms. 
the accumulation of individual data or information or material resources of power can be traced within the graph from node to node throughout the edges, representing, as already mentioned, the specific types of relationships between them. Edges can be directed and weighted, which provides further data about analyzed network. Furthermore, such network graphs can provide data suitable for political and sociological interpretation, which may be further used for a variety of purposes, including detecting various subgroups within the networks or cliques, visually displaying a network of individuals and their relationship, indicating gaps or structural holes where the network is weak, and identifying figures who act as bridges between the networks. And why the bridges are important? Well, location in network is crucial to understanding power and influence and to detect meaningful groups of individuals from sources. Those that serve as bridges hold some form of a monopoly on the information or resources transmission, and subsequently their position increases their social capital. Important to say, in the last decades of the 20th century, SNA has been used in numerous other fields, including archaeology and history, and as a methodology, it's not limited to the analysis of the human interaction. It can be implemented of any type of data, and it may be used also for analysis, for example, of distribution of pottery, patterns of settlements, and so on. To implement the concept of SNA, I have chosen the group of the Middle Kingdom and Second Intermediate Period high-ranking official, the Treasurers. Initially, the project was founded by Alexander von Humboldt Foundation and hosted by the University of Cologne. The 37 holders of the title Treasurer are known by noun from 95 inscribed objects. All out, the Office of Treasurer, as well the treasurers themselves, has been analyzed by many authors by evaluating and comparing all prosopographic information of a person's social environment. More data can be obtained not only on the identity of the individual, but especially on the reconstruction of social interrelations within a whole collective or network of persons. For the purpose of this study and Tonight's lecture, an approach to basic network analysis is used that is commensurate with the representational and fragmentary nature of sources. In the Middle Kingdom and the Second Intermediate Period, the Mer Hatemet, or Overseer of Seal Things, or Treasurer, was one of the most important officials, basically in charge of the palace as an economic unit responsible for incoming goods, their storage, and consequent distribution of commodities from the palace. He controlled the revenues coming to the palace from all around the country, including raw materials, and was also in charge of royal building projects. The title itself is attested within the branches of the central administration, as well as in the provinces. Those who worked at the court are identified by additional ranking titles. Treasurers were greatly involved in sealing goods, which is exemplified in the high number of attestations of the office itself on scarabs and scarab seals. The importance of treasurer office is further reflected in their title strings, as they have had the most important ranking titles. As it has been pointed out, SNA quantifies and measures interconnectivity, in our case that would be interconnectivity between the treasurers or given treasurer and individuals attested on their monuments. Attestation in the same source is the most general connection and is applied here in the first place. In fact, for every single Merhetemet, in our case Senebi, Data from all sources where he and other individuals are recorded are extracted in order to establish a prosopographic network, in fact, to identify people of the treasurer X, let's say, in order to mark nodes, in fact, to uh, detect persons and uh, to detect edges or connections between them. In this way, a person 
let's say, treasurer or individual from his circle is not anymore defined as an isolated unit, but as an individual who is acting with other people on a supposedly, let's say, social level and hypothetically can be assigned to a certain group or groups of persons by specific parameters, social and genealogical affiliation or institutional background. The present study or the present lecture focuses on the network or better to say networks of the treasurer Senebi, one of the best attested and most influential individuals who worked under Neverhotep I and Sebekhotep IV's rulers of the 13th. The monuments featuring the treasurer Senebi are assembled and analyzed in a seminal study by Wolfram Grajetsky through treasurers of the late Middle Kingdom. Based on the preserved data, Senebi appears on eight stele on six as a treasurer. His stele predominantly attests his peers and subordinates, providing rich corpus of data for creating his social network or his social network. A family is the first collective or network of which an individual was a part of, and that's the same for Senebi. The second collective of persons which is allocated to the social environment of an individual may belong to the household and then to subordinates and colleagues, in fact, to those who worked under him or in his office. Consequently, they belong to different social areas and professional areas. And for this reason, the network includes on the one hand, officers connected with various branches of administration both national and local, and on the other, networks may even reflect a subtle social stratigraphy within the ego network. The third collective or the third circle would include the individual networks of the persons attested on the objects commemorating treasurer. In fact, those are their own ego networks. The objects commemorating treasurers theoretically may record the people who might have never met, but who belong to the same office. If so, the relationship between them can be marked as a weak. However, creating the sociogram, which would also include weak edges, would make it possible to observe the most elaborate picture of the administrative system itself. The first collective or network of which Senebi was a part of is, of course, his family. However, his background was rather modest. The name of his father is usually abbreviated to Nebipu. He held the modest title, or I would rather say identifier, of Anhenyut, well-being man of the town, just like the grandfather of kings Neverhotep I and Sebekhotep IV, whom Senebi served as treasurer. Senebi's mother was the lady of the house, or Nebet Pear, Teni. Nothing is known about any wife of children or children. On the other hand, his cursus honorum is well known. He started his career, as far as we can trace from the sources, as King Acquaintance, or Rehnesut, as represented on the stela Lower C39, simultaneously indicating rank, status, and a function in the court hierarchy, and uh, he was later promoted to the post of treasurer. His career path, that's important to say, would have resembled those of the well-known late Middle Kingdom pattern of promotion, starting from Rechnesut, perhaps via Merper or to Mer Hetemet. People working in the administration of Treasurer Senebi, that's also very important to notice, include several king's acquaintances, such as Neba, Senen, and Rehua, which are also very attested, and uh, all of them ha have had their own networks. It is also uh, worth of mentioning that some other high state officials bearing the ranking title Roy Royal Sealer appear also with Senebi on Stile. They were perhaps colleagues of the treasurer rather than his subordinates. All out, all of them were most likely ranked under him. For example, Sitila Cairo 
2016-14 shows two overseers of inner palace and several king acquaintances. Let's see more closely how some of the monuments of Senebi feature his network. Still a London uh, British Museum 428, which is presently on slide, displays several important officials. Opposite Senebi, three officials stand in a row in a pose of reverence, a chief of tents of Upper Egypt, a bow keeper and a scribe of the offering table named Sawib Tah. Sawib Tah enjoyed the status of heritage, well, child or fictive son, I would rather say protégé of a Senebi. As a scribe of, um, of the offering table working for a temple, he was responsible for registering the product to be offered to the gods, at least in part delivered by the royal treasury. Through this stila, he honored his highest superior, well, of course, excluding the king, the treasurer, who was responsible for supplying the temple and to whom he ultimately owed at least part of his incomes. The chief of tents of Upper Egypt, Nefersemen Tah Arj, was probably a link between the treasury and the temple, allowed his exact relations to other officials remain unexplained. The third register shows four Anhenut, who might have been friends or colleagues of Sawib Tah. Perhaps they were also part of the royal entourage or members of the local community of Abydos, who took part in the holy procession in honor of Osiris. The lowest register presents medium-ranking officials of the central administration, who perhaps had been attached to Sawipta during a royal commission at Abydos. Stila, previously kept in the collection of the Liverpool Museum, is especially intriguing. The inscription records the name of Senebi's father, two chamberlains and overseers of Lower Egypt, but also of King's son, Hedger, whose mother was King's daughter, Sad Henti Heti. Both individuals refer to the family of the 13th dynasty King Kenger and can be considered as a link to the global court network of the late Middle Kingdom. Senebi is also attested, along with the already mentioned King Acquaintance Nebach in a rock inscription of Sehel Island, mentioning the family of King Neferhotep I, and that would be another link to the global court network of the late Middle Kingdom. However, nothing is known of a tomb of Senebi in the north of Egypt or of a cenotype as Abydos. All the stele coming from Abydos that feature him came probably from the cemeteries uh, beside the processional road and temple area. However, his close associate, the king's acquaintance Rehuang, um, had very probable a cenotaph of his own at Abydos, including three stele. One of these, presently in the collection of the Kunsthistorische Museum Wien, this place Senebi and might have belonged to the same building. No monuments are known to have been dedicated by Senebi himself at Abydos. It is unknown also for how long Senebi was in office. However, his contemporaries Nebang and Rehuang still worked for Neferhotep's brother, King Sebekhotep IV. All out, Senebi was high-ranking official in the global context of the social history of the Middle Kingdom and Second Intermediate Period. His personal history is a micro-history and it's very diversified. Senebi's history extracted from the objects affiliated to him and transferred to his ego network presents the graph exemplifying 145 nodes, well, 145 individuals, and 89 uh, edges between them with a density of 0.0087 and 97 percentages of asymmetrical ties, reflecting the complexity of office uh, he has been in charge of. Well, as it can be seen on the graph all out, the Senebi network seems to be a rich one uh, the links 
the closed links or uh, clearly identified edges between uh, Senebi and other persons attested in his world are very limited. As already mentioned, some of Senebi colleagues, such as Hanemes, Rehuan, uh, uh, Neboa, stayed related to him during his career, and all of them had uh, have had very rich their own ego networks. Hanemes was one of the prominent courtiers of middle rank at the time of King Sebekhotep uh, III, Neferhotep I, and his brother Sebekhotep IV. Uh, and as such, he is well attested. Seven Stile, where he appears as part of the world of Senebi, being at the center of his own Nego network. His task seemed to have been to work in one of the provisioning quarters, or Shena, of the palace. He held the title Iriat Vedepu, keeper of a chamber of a cupbearer, merced, store overseer, and a king acquaintance. Hanmes belonged to the Senebi social network. But in the same time, he was a bridge between the ego network of the treasurer and his own ego network, as in cases of several other officials attested uh, within the Senebi circle. However, the social networks of Henmes is rich and especially complex, encompassing both the family and the office circles. Extracted from the sources, Hanemes Ego Network records 84 edges and 84 nodes and 62 edges between them, with a density of 0 0.0085 and 78% uh, of asymmetrical ties, and it's far more dense than the network of Senegal. Rehuan, he is mainly known as uh, King Aquitans and uh, Neferhotep I and Sebekhotep IV, and he also belonged to the entourage of the treasurer Senebi. His ego network records 124 nodes and 73 edges between them, with a density of 0 0.0133 and 62% of asymmetrical ties and is even more dense than the Hanemes network. Another important bridge toward the global network was King Aquinas Neb Amch, the best known high steward of the 13th dynasty. He started his career as a King Aquinas, as already mentioned, and is known in this position from a number of rock inscriptions found in the region of Aswan. Uh, on one of the inscriptions, he appears together with the family of the king Neferhotep, undoubtedly having been sent uh, on a mission in regard uh, to uh, guide it for the king. As high steward, he appears on monuments datable under Sebekhotep IV. An important monument mentioning the high steward is the stela of the queen Nubhaz, the wife of one of the success successors of Sebekhotep IV, now in the collection of Louvre. The stela lists the family of the queen, including Nebach, as he was her uncle, well, the brother of her father. On the stela, uh, Nebanch is described finally by the additional phrase, uh, the one who follows the king, or Shemesu Nesu, the epithet which also appears on his few seals. It is possible that his title of follower of the king was granted as a sign of the closeness to the royal family. The complex network of Senebi and his closest associates uh, mentioned uh, before contain 221 nodes and 125 edges between them, and it's rather complex, but also clearly exemplified that uh, the clear links of Senebi are very, or clear edges are very limited. Another link which would lead the microhistory of the Senebi to the global network is the link with the, his predecessor in office, the treasurer Seneb Sumai. When the two networks are merged, uh, they produced a rather global network containing 485 nodes, individuals in fact, 
and uh, 269 edges between them. To show it in another more, the global network of CNB would look as presented on the slide. And what can we learn from the sociograms of Treasurer Cinebi? The network of the late Middle Kingdom treasurer is full of asymmetrical ties, which reflect the hierarchy between the marked individuals. The created networks show that Cenebi as treasurer was directly connected to many collectives of persons being attached in the various branches of administration, both on the national and on the local level. His microhistory, if we analyze him as an individual, is rather limited, but if we consider him as an element of the global network of the late Middle Kingdom administrative system, the picture, I would dare to say, changes dramatically. Microhistorical practice, the way I do understand it, does not begin with the event itself at the macro level, but with the micro or global level structure, in our case, Middle Kingdom Second Intermediate Period social structure and the general picture Egyptologists do have formed about a given period. According to C.R. Toth, historians in the course of a lengthy research, quoting, meet scores of individual cases, and in one of those, the only one that they write up as a microhistory they recognize the features of a whole age or the complete problems they are studying, end of quotation. And that is exactly the picture reflected by the sociogram of Senebi, the picture of the late Middle Kingdom administrative system. However, it must be stressed that the collected and analyzed data are just the present state of art. We do not know how many objects any of the considered individuals have had or have been attested on it, and how many additional individuals were part of their networks. It is necessary to be very cautious in drawing conclusions from network structures documented by the text that we happen to have, as with many other historical or archaeological conclusion purely based on statistics. And as with all other methodological approaches, we do not have always made a definite answer but final conclusion, but stimulating and challenging tool for testing what we do know and what we supposed to know. Still, the sociograms produced here, I would dare to say, graphically illustrate an entire community centered around the treasurer, and that may be of relevance in regard to the complete network of the Middle Kingdom social intermediate period society in general. Thank you very much for your attention.